Welcome to Care Coordination in Interoperable Health IT Systems, Overview of Interoperable Health IT, Lecture B. This unit will cover the following learning objectives. 1. Define healthcare interoperability. 2. Summarize the vision and benefits of interoperable health IT. 3. Identify and examine several barriers and challenges to obtaining interoperable health IT. And 4. Discuss the U.S. strategy for health interoperability. In this lecture, we will be covering the barriers and challenges of health interoperability. You will be able to identify and discuss barriers and challenges to obtaining interoperable health IT. Several organizations related to the federal government have evaluated the problems in achieving health interoperability in the United States. The Government Accountability Office of the United States, GAO, describes barriers to health interoperability as the following. Insufficiencies in health data standards, variation in state privacy rules, difficulty in accurately matching all the right records to the right patient, costs involved in achieving the goals, and the need for governance and trust among entities to facilitate sharing of health information. The Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, ONC, has a committee called the Health Information Technology Policy Committee. This committee also produced a list of barriers to interoperability. Items include 1. Lack of universal adoption of standards-based EHR systems. 2. Impact on providers' day-to-day -day workflow. 3. Complex privacy and security challenges associated with widespread health information exchange. 4. Need for synchronous collective action among multiple stakeholders. And 5. Weak or misaligned incentives. Compared to the previous list from the Government Accountability Office, there are some differences, but there are many similarities. Finally, the Jason Report, entitled A Robust Health Data Infrastructure, identified an obstacle not on either of the previous lists. The Jason Report noted that it's too hard to innovate with current health IT because you can't just do a simple search for patient information on the EHR. What the report said was, quote, Current approaches for structuring EHRs and achieving interoperability have largely failed to open up new opportunities for entrepreneurship and innovation that can lead to products and services that enhance healthcare provider workflow and strengthen the connection between the patient and the healthcare system, thus impeding progress toward improved health outcomes. End quote. Now we are going to look at a combination of the GAO and ONC lists in more depth, as well as the barrier of innovation. But instead of using the word barrier, we will use the word challenge, since barrier implies no interoperability is possible. One could think of interoperability as a continuum from barely interoperable to fully interoperable. You will find that this continuum has existed for quite a while and will continue to evolve as new data types, new players, and new technologies are added to the equation. Therefore, even if some level of interoperability is achieved, there will still be challenges. Let's start off with the challenge of not enough standardization. There are too many variations in healthcare data, which is why we need standards. Standard data formats and protocols are needed to manage the variation. However, existing standards are not robust enough. This is because standards development is hard and time-consuming due to the complexity of the problem and the necessary consensus-based process. There are also gaps and overlaps between different standards. Also, the standards are too loose or not fully specified. What is really needed is plug-and-play implementation profiles that fully specify all the interoperability requirements and employ all standards needed to solve the use case. 
Another thing that is needed is management of upgrades to standards. Finally, currently adopted and mature standards are hard to implement, which lengthens vendor development time and that limits innovation. This topic is covered in more depth in Unit 5. Another challenge is that not only are there insufficient standards, they are not fully used. There is a lack of adoption of standards until recently because there was little motivation for HIT vendors to use or upgrade standards. This is because a vendor was not incentivized to exchange information with other vendors, and providers were not incentivized to exchange information with other providers. However, the EHR Incentive Program, or Meaningful Use Program, has been successful and encouraged some standards adoption. And the difficulty in implementation of mature standards raises the entry bar for vendors since a significant work effort is required for vendor development. There is also implementation work often required for specific provider implementations. This is because it is common to have variances in implementation of standards between vendor systems. It is also because there is often inadequate vendor compliance testing and vendor-to-vendor -vendor interoperability testing and certification. Therefore, the providers need to do special work to make the connectivity work as part of that adoption effort. Complicating this further is that vendors and providers are at different versions of standards. Interoperability implementation is discussed in more depth in Unit 6. Every year we are making important progress in solving this difficult problem, but as you can see, there is still much work to be done. A third challenge is related to matching patients. How does the system identify a patient? And then when exchanging information with other systems, how do the systems determine that they are communicating about the same patient? We cannot link records between health IT systems without matching patients. If each person had a national identifier that uniquely identified them to the healthcare system, such as a social security number in financial transactions, this would not be a problem. There have been many discussions about the pros and cons of having a national patient identifier. It is still being discussed at the time of this lecture. The primary argument against a national patient identifier is that it could compromise privacy. Internal strategies exist today in numerous organizations to match identifiers within organizations. However, they do not often exist between organizations. Patient matching is really hard because there are data quality issues, such as duplication of data within and between organizations. Imagine when two different people are incorrectly linked together or their data are merged together. To do proper matching, you need to send protected health information, PHI, and personally identifiable information, PII, data, along with the patient data in order to do matching. That is the same information that we are trying so hard to protect with HIPAA rules and other rules for identity theft. So patient matching increases vulnerability to breaches. Therefore, we have to deal with those contradicting issues. And who takes care of the problems? What if you find an error? What if you find a duplicate? What if you find two patients incorrectly linked together? How are the duplicates merged or the incorrectly joined separated? How is that going to get resolved within an organization? How is that going to get resolved between organizations? What happens when key matching demographics change? What happens when the name changes? What happens even if a gender changes? What do we do? For more information on patient identification, please go to Component 24, Unit 5. A fourth challenge is related to security and privacy. If you think of it, and as mentioned in the last slide, Increasing interoperability increases our privacy and security vulnerabilities. We have an increased potential for security breaches and privacy violations, and an increased scope and impact of these breaches and violations. The privacy laws were initially designed to restrict information flow. 
Also, privacy laws differ by state, so this complicates exchange of information involving multiple states. Another challenge related to privacy and security is consent management. We need to obtain consent for sharing data, and there are different consents and different rules. Is the consent on paper, or is it electronic? Where are the consents going to be stored? How many different consents are needed? This is all complex. What if the patient changes their mind and wants to revoke consent? What if the patient has specialized consent requirements allowing only a portion of their data to be shared or limiting who it can be shared with? What if sensitive information must be protected, like certain sensitive results or diagnoses are not to be sent to certain people? The provenance of data, meaning the origin of the data, is an important part of privacy and security because it is essential to know who generated this data. How do you ensure that the provenance of the data is known and shared so that all the receivers know the data's source? Another consideration is the complexity of an audit and how it may impact data flow. To be sure that the data flowed correctly is a privacy and security concern. An auditor might ask, quote, Where are all the places that this data went? How do you know it went where it needed to go and not somewhere else? How do you know it wasn't tampered with or looked at on the way? End quote. Can an auditor answer those questions with the information you collected? For more information on ensuring the privacy and security of information shared, see Unit 10. A fifth challenge is the alignment of incentives. Sharing information could hurt a provider's business. The fee-for-service payment model, which has been the payment model in the United States for a long time, does not encourage interoperability at all. In fee-for-service, a provider has no incentive to work collaboratively with other organizations since they are paid for the service being given, not the overall health outcomes of the patient. In fact, sharing data between organizations makes it easier for patients to go elsewhere for care, which could mean a loss of incentives. In a competitive world, why would you want to share? Inadvertently, sharing information with the wrong organization or people opens you up to a liability for breaches. So organizations are used to not sharing to keep a patient's data safe. If you are going to share, you need sharing agreements. But they can sometimes conflict with each other as you try to share with other people. For example, Dr. Smith might enter into a sharing agreement with Good Health Hospital that does not allow him to also share with another hospital. Another problem is that the organization you would like to share with is not set up to electronically send or receive data. This is especially true when the sender or receiver does not participate in the Meaningful Use Program, either by choice or because they are ineligible. For example, you might want to share with a long-term care facility, a rehabilitation facility, a home care agency, a psychiatric facility, or an organization that doesn't have Medicare or Medicaid populations. These organizations do not participate in the Meaningful Use Program. Or perhaps you would like to share with an organization that is not far along in the Meaningful Use Program, has not been able to adopt an EHR yet, or opt it out. In addition, vendors may not feel that they would benefit from an open systems approach. In general, an open systems approach means it is easier for a customer to move to a competitor. Therefore, it is naturally a trade-off for a vendor to consider open systems because it makes them vulnerable to their competition. In fact, a vendor could benefit from allowing for this inter-organizational sharing through a closed vendor-centric interoperable network. Imagine a vendor that has software purchased by multiple providers. Imagine that vendor providing a network just with their software among all these organizations. Providers would need to use the vendor's software to participate in the network. That would benefit the vendor and those providers, but it closes off everyone else from participating. 
These are all examples of interoperability challenges when providers and vendors do not have the incentive to achieve interoperable health IT. A sixth challenge is provider workflow. There has been a lot of talk about how providers have suffered from suboptimal health IT that's not aligned to their workflow. Interoperable health IT is no stranger to that. The ideal workflow might not be possible if the interoperability technology is not ready or if the provider workflow does not include end-to-end -end care coordination. For example, imagine that a doctor wants to refer a patient to a specialist. The ideal workflow would be one in which the provider works with the patient and, with their permission, refers them to a specific specialist or clinic that accepts the patient's insurance. The provider makes the appointment for the patient and then electronically transmits a summary of the patient's care to the specialist. While the technology to transmit the electronic summary exists on most EHRs today, the actual provider workflows often do not meet this ideal. More commonly, the referring provider recommends a list of specialists but leaves it up to the patient to find one that can provide an appointment in a timely manner and who takes the patient's insurance. It is difficult to electronically push the summary between providers when the referring provider is not sure which doctor the patient will ultimately select. The patient could call the referring provider and ask that the summary be sent, but this puts more reliance on the patient to ensure that care is coordinated. Another reason why provider workflow is a challenge is because simply when providers have to use health IT, this often gives them new tasks in an already busy workday. The change in workflow imposed by health IT adds stress and impacts their morale. Continued meaningful use changes and quality metric changes have meant that they have a lot more changes to adapt to. The incentive or the value for performing new tasks are not always clear. Some examples of new responsibilities include the need to review and respond to electronic patient communications via secure messaging and the need to manage and review incoming electronic referral documentation. EHR workflow and provider workflow need to be better aligned to support interoperable health IT. A seventh challenge is the larger ecosystem. When we want to do interoperability with a few systems in a single organization, it is not that hard to do and change things. But as we try to implement interoperability with larger numbers of systems, implementation and maintenance of interoperability becomes increasingly complex. As we go outside our walls to the local community, across the state, across the region, and then across the nation, we are talking about a much, much larger ecosystem. This is a challenge because big, complex things move slowly. The other thing is, if there is not a clear leader, it is a federated method of accomplishing tasks. Without a clear owner or leader, who is in charge of these data? Who is in charge of keeping this system running? Who is in charge of keeping the data flowing? Who is in charge of keeping the data quality good? Who is in charge of keeping it secure? The agreement process that must happen between all of these players slows down progress. When you have problems agreeing, people tend to agree not to agree, so they tend not to act. Not only are there more players that have to agree, but we're talking about heterogeneous members with different priorities and needs. The needs for a home health agency is different than those for a long-term care agency, than those for a primary care provider, than those for a specialist, than those for an acute care hospital, than those for a psychiatric hospital, than those for a critical access hospital, than those for a community hospital, than those for a large academic medical center, etc. There are also other players, such as public health authorities, labs, insurance companies, etc., and that adds complexity, meaning it is complex to make changes. So what does this really all add up to? It's money. Interoperability is expensive. We have already spent a lot of money trying to achieve it. The nation has spent a lot of money at this problem through numerous ONC and CMS initiatives. 
and vendors and healthcare providers have personally invested in supporting interoperability as well. There is a lot more money that will need to be spent in the future because imagine the costs of interoperability. Vendors need to build interoperability capabilities. Providers need to implement and support them. And health information exchanges, HIEs, need to facilitate information flow. Integration software at provider sites are needed right now because interfaces are not plug and play and need special custom coding to make two vendors connect. You need staff at the provider sites to support all the information flows. Health information exchanges and health information exchange organizations are not for free. These are physical organizations that need locations and have capital costs like space, rent, trained personnel, and special software to be able to handle large-scale interoperability. For more information on Health Information Exchange and Health Information Exchange organizations, see Unit 8. There are also the costs of implementation and maintenance of patient matches and terminology mappings over time. If you think about it, to do what we really need to do, we need to set policy, which means you need to get expensive resources at the table like lawyers, consultants, vendor and provider executives, and politicians. Imagine the cost of all the trainings and ongoing support costs because it has only just begun. We will have to support this large-scale interoperable health care ecosystem. This figure summarizes the challenges for interoperable health IT, as discussed in this lecture. 1. Not enough standardization. 2. Not fully used standards. 3. Patient matching. 4. Privacy and security. 5. Incentive alignment. 6. Provider workflow. 7. Larger ecosystem. And 8. Costs. This concludes Lecture B of Overview of Interoperable Health IT. In this lecture, we listed the barriers to healthcare interoperability as identified by the federal government. Also, we discussed and examined interoperability challenges such as 1. Not enough standardization. 2. Not fully used standards. 3. Patient matching. 4. Privacy and security. 5. Incentive alignment. 6. Provider workflow. 7. Larger ecosystem. And 8. Costs.